Hello, Mass Jespersen from Flowhow. In this video, I want to show you how to set up a uh, simulation in Molex 3D with uh, for se sequential filling. And the se sequential filling is normally used for maybe bigger parts like a bumper or for a car or, or s other um, parts, plastic parts that, where you don't want uh, weld lines because uh, one of the biggest uh, advantages is uh, that you can uh, produce parts without weld lines and also uh, you don't get the, the notch effect from the weld line. Um, in some cases uh, the sequential filling are also used to be able to pack an area uh, so you first open a, a the last maybe nozzle so you in the packing so you only use it for packing and critical area so you get uh, no uh, sink marks in that area but um, let's uh, try to to start up with a simulation I've chosen a very simple part just the plate and um, if I want to start a simulation I'll go here make a new run I have made some runs and then we'll look at the results afterwards. Uh, I import a geometry. Um, in this case, I'll take this one part runner. Yeah. Here. Yeah. There's different ways. Uh, in this case, I've exported from my CAD system a part and a solid of the runner system. So uh, I just have to define these. I mark this one, attribute, say part. I mark uh, this one. Now I start with this one. Hot runner, gate, may, may, hot runner. And then I have to specify a valve gate control ID. Otherwise I can't control them. You can have same uh, ID uh, valve gates for two different. If I, if I want to open this and this at the same time, I could uh, call them uh, two both. But um, I'll just make uh, this one, call it one, like that. And if I want to show it, I can go to uh, here and say valve gate, like this. And I go back the model I take this one attribute I give it a hot runner number two and the last one I give it a hot runner again number three like that and I take this one as a hot runner, nothing. And then I have to specify the face where the melt is entering, like this. And then I'm actually ready for doing the mesh. I best like normally um, uh, using lines because it's easier to change. But uh, in some cases, if you have some special geometries, it's uh, a solid is good and you can see this one is split in the cat part so uh, otherwise I couldn't define them uh, individual individually um, yes now I have to throw some mesh on I do it uh, first this one yes let's just say one apply it actually doesn't matter much. And then I take the gates and the runner, seating, give it a seating. Okay, let's say 0.6 maybe, apply. Yeah, and you can see now it gets a lot of uh, notes here, which is actually needed to be able to uh, calculate the correct gate freeze. Now you don't have gate freeze because it's hot runner, but shear and so on. 
Um, like this. And then I go to the meshing, generate. Now it rebuilds the area around the gate. And a final check. So we check the if it's okay and and there's any problem, but there should not be any problems. Now we have this one. And uh, we have to put on a material. I just Take one, doesn't matter. Could be this one. And then we have to put up a process. <coughs> you just put the process up as normal. I normally put in, don't use 100 there. Let's say we have a filling time of one second. And packing, I don't need a packing now. And then in advanced, you have now the valve gates here. I'll just move this down here, go to advanced. And you have the valve gate. The way that it works is that if you don't do anything, everybody have, all the valve gates have one control point, one it says here, you can change this one. And initial status is the status that how it starts out and it's open. But what we want is fill this first. When this melt reaches here, then it should open the valve gate two. And when the melt front reaches here, it should open valve gate three, because that's the way we don't get any uh, well lines. So the first one should be open all the time but the two others should be closed at that time. So for number two here, we need an extra control bar. So I put in two here. And now we have initial status and a timing. The initial stating status should be closed. It should start closed. And then after, <clears throat> um, then we have the possibilities to control this. When do we want this one to start? And we have a timing. It's not that easy. We have a flow front by node. It works quite good. We have a fill volume. It's also a bit hard. We have a timing after VP switch. This is if you need the uh, packing. And then we have a flow front by hot runner tip. In this case, we take this flow front by hot runner tip. That means when the flow front reaches this hot runner tip, it opens, so um, we don't need any other things that um, it's like having a sensor in the valve gate and when the flow front is there, it opens. The third one will, I'll give in two control points, start out with closed, yes. And then we uh, use, I'll try to use this uh, flow front by node, and then I can select a node. Let's say I select this note and say, then it opens. That meaning when this, when the well, uh, the, the flow front reaches this note, this one opens. In the in the uh, valve gate two, when it reaches the valve gate here, it opens. But in s many cases, you want the flow front to pass. Uh, past the well, uh, the gate before you open it, so you're 100% sure that you don't open it too early and get a small well line on the wrong side. So um, this is how it's defined. Next, nothing there. Finish. Okay. And now it's just the uh, run the analysis. No, uh, yeah, no big deal. 
I can just <clears throat> fast show you uh, how it can also be done with um, runner lines or pin gates. Pin gates is the easiest, so we can take that one. Um, I can copy here just to show you. And then I'll delete the solid mesh. The normally I just generate and keep solid mesh. No, continue. I've just del just uh, copied it. And then I take this, 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 and this, and delete away with these. And then I can go to model gate there to doesn't matter. To now, I just put them on. Of course, you will do it uh, more structured. And I take this one, edit attribute. Instead of co cold water gate, I give it a hot runner gate. And I take one, I take this one, hot runner gate, two, this one, hot runner gate, three. Like this mesh generate generate having a valve gaze like this um, you can then control it but you don't have the uh, flow uh, if, if you have a a non-balanced flow like I had in my runner, it will not be represented. So if you don't have, if you have a special runner system, uh, I would always recommend to have that final check. And let's see. Okay. I got the same. I just double click new based on the current setting. And in the advanced setting here, I can just change again. Otherwise, it's, yeah, I'll just try to change this one. Uh, let's see. One. Yeah, flow front by tip. I'll just do it like that. Next, 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 finish. And it's ready to run the analysis. The last thing I would show is um, how to do it with lines that you have uh, maybe drawn in uh, in uh, your CAD system and exported as IGES lines. Copy run. I'll take this one again. I'll just delete the solid mesh. Keep it as solid mesh. No, continue. <clears throat> and then I just delete this, 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 and this. And I have prepared some lines. I hope so. Runner overflow. I just runner sequence. Should, yeah, there it is. And now I have some lines. You can see. It's just split up in lines. So um, I take this one attribute, hot runner gate. One. I don't need to change the uh, two. Oh, oops. there was something with it. And then I take these. I can take them off. Hot runner. Six. Like this. And. Ah. And a meld entrance. Like that. And again, mesh generate. Generate Yeah. 
this is also a way to do it, but you can just define what, uh, which one you want. I normally like best actually this one having uh, the the correct runner system plus uh, in lines so I could change the dimensions and so on easily. If you have solid, you, you have to go back to the cat system to change if, if it's bigger change. Okay, then uh, we'll look into some of the, um, the results that you can get. <clears throat> we can just say uh, this one, it's the solid runner. I'll go to a view like that and the filling. And now we can see if I run, I'll just see, yeah. A simulation, maybe it's a bit too slow. Like that. Yeah. And look at here, when it hits this one, it starts and the milk front accelerates. And then it starts when it hits here. So this is what you get. And if we look at the well lines, we don't have any well lines. And if we then look at the history plot, the sprue pressure, we should be able to see these peaks there and there. Go back here. And you can see the line when I move it, the line forward. You can see when it jumps up or drops down here. It's because now it can deliver more volume in. Uh, the volume in the will be bigger. You have a bigger cross section to deliver the same volume inside the cavity. So it jumps down. So, but one thing you get from this, which actually can produce some uh, surface errors, is the accelerate of the melt front. So in some cases, if you can get a well valve gate that can open, not like a binary open or close, if it could be open a bit slower, it would be nice because then you don't get, this is a, a plot of the, of, of the velocity. You could say what I want to have an equal line, equal, what I want for, for having a good surface quality is uh, equal distance between these uh, ESO curves. And um, these are representing one percentage of filling of the part. So you can see when it hits this gate, it accelerates the melt. And this can cause some um, errors on the uh, or, or surface errors. So um, if you, for example, uh, could wait a bit, you can see here where I waited to open the valve gate until it reaches this uh, node, uh, then you don't have the same accelerations as you have here. So normally this would give a better surface than this. Okay, just a small introduction to uh, how to set up a sequential uh, filling in uh, Molex 3D. Bye-bye.